Welcome to State Affairs. I'm Steve Adubato. We are coming to you from the Agnes Varis NJTV studio in beautiful Brick City, Newark, New Jersey. By popular demand, we have them back. Joe Gingoli is CEO of Joseph Gingoli and Son, and also Jack Morris, President and CEO of Edgewood Properties. Gentlemen, you have, you're celebrating as we do this program, the one-year anniversary of Hard Rock in Atlantic City. It's a casino. It's more than a casino, right? The Hard Rock Atlantic City. Entertainment, restaurants. Got the whole thing going there. It's been about a year, Jack, so we had you guys here when it was happening. That's right. A lot of people from Atlantic City being employed. Yes. Of the 4,000 employees you have, you said 1,300 from AC? 1,300 from AC. How does that AC. happen? Tell folks. It, it, it doesn't happen easy. Um, we worked hard, uh, worked with uh, the uh, local um, people of Local Atlantic union, City. is that Local 54? Local 54. Uh, Joe worked really hard with everybody to make this happen, and we're real proud of uh, what we said we we're going to deliver. We delivered that, and uh, we're doing great things in Atlantic City. So when you came here last year, Jack, you talked about the fact that you wanted to hire people from Atlantic City, but it, it, it wasn't easy. What makes it challenging? You know, it was, it was actually not that hard. Uh, we focused on Atlantic City residents, uh, our HR department, and um, of course our partners and the operator Hard Rock uh, was on board with that. Uh, we opened up with 20% of our employees as Atlantic City residents. And what happened as we constricted for the winter months, it, that number went up, went up to 25%, mm. which said that when our managers could pick who to keep, they kept Atlantic City residents, which is what we knew there was a viable, trainable workforce there. We partnered ourselves and all the other casinos with Local 54 and with the support of Rob Angelo and the Department, the Department of Labor. Of Labor. My Secretary we, of Labor. Yep, yeah, we started the first workforce development program in the history of Atlantic City, and it's up and running. It's funded by uh, half with the Department of Labor and the industry kicking in the other half. Public-private partnership. Yes, sir. So, Jack, let me see. We've known each other a long time. We've, we've talked about a whole range of things offline as well. What I'm curious about is, did, did, did you see, both of you have been very successful in developing, building, making things happen. When you went into AC, lots of questions, lots of challenges. Still, the whole range of issues. We're going to be doing a special on Atlantic City in the next couple of months. Did you have a lot of doubts about the potential for success? No, I had Why no not? doubts. Uh, because we knew that Atlantic City um, needed and wanted to put people to work, and Atlantic City residents uh, were, were, were great people who just needed an opportunity. And... Uh, New Jersey is a great state, one of the most densely populated states in the country. Uh, we're surrounded by uh, Pennsylvania and New York, mm -hmm. and it just needed a, a kick in the you-know-what. And, yeah. and that's, I think, what we showed that we could do it. The other, sorry for interrupting. The other thing that's really fascinating to me is that we've done a, a lot of work on prisoner reentry, reentering to society, ex-offenders. Because people are like, listen, they broke the law. It's not my business. Whatever happened, keep them in jail. No, they get out. You two guys, with others, have been working on an initiative to hire ex-offenders. Make the case. Yes. Um, we, uh, we partnered with uh, uh, Atlantic County Court System, and they have Drug Court, which is a, uh, around the country, very successful program. We asked if uh, they could change the name to Recovery Court, mm -hmm. and those graduates uh, coming through our workforce development program are being hired by us and other casinos, and we've had, a, uh, had good results. What have you found? It's saying good results is one thing, Joe, but what have you found? Because there are a whole bunch of people watching right now and say, really? I don't think I'd do that. Make the case that it's been a good thing. Well, the case is giving people opportunity who want to change their life and have had made past mistakes and giving them good jobs, union jobs with benefits, uh, has had a very positive result for us as a casino and for the city. What do you think it's meant for the city, Jack? Well, I can tell you that people that come to Hard Rock um, always comment on how great uh, the service, the staff, how people were polite, nice to them. And no matter what happens, uh, they had, you know, experience, they had a wait in line, you know, an elevator broke, something happened. The staff has been incredible and they would come back time and time again. Uh, and, and I think that that shows for uh, what we've done and, 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 and what 
the program is, is doing for, not only for Atlantic City, mm. but just the people come up to me that work there, employees come up to me, and are so thankful to have a job and, and have what we built. How rewarding. Proud of it. Very, very. How rewarding. Incredible. We walk around the casino sometimes, Jack, myself, my brother Michael, Jim Allen, our, our partner yep. at the Hard Rock. From the Hard Rock. And talk to the different employees, and they come up and, and thank us, tell us about their families, and they do the same thing with our guests. And, you know, that has uh, brought, brought our guests back. Yeah. yeah. Real quick before I let you go, um, a sense of community and making a difference. Charitable works for a long time, supporting public broadcasting, our production operation, as well as uh, the chair of a major health care system. Thank you. In the state of New Jersey, RWJ Barnabas Health. Where does that come from? Because you're business people, you're bottom line gentlemen who want to make sure you make a profit, but you've, oh, I've always noticed. And it's not only about making a profit, it's about doing the right thing. And that's what both of us have been about, and that's what really gave us the opportunity to say, let's look at something that somebody else wouldn't look at, that the Wall Street guys wouldn't look at. Why? Because the bottom line may not look just, right to them? It just didn't look right to them. You know, it didn't, it didn't fit in their box. But we saw an opportunity, and we knew that people needed a second chance. And, uh, and I think we proved it. Look at the double-digit uh, increases in Atlantic City revenues. And it's not just casinos. You're starting to see businesses uh, that are now coming to Atlantic City, and that's going to continue. By the way, let's make it clear. The national unemployment rate is around 3.6. The unemployment rate in Atlantic City area is registered at 6%. I mean, it's not the same as the rest of the country. Where's your sense of making a difference come from? You know, um, grew up in the business. I had opportunity in my life and thought, you know, if others had the same opportunity, what would the outcome be? Would it be different? And um, from a business standpoint, social responsibility is a currency. And um, quite frankly, uh, our uh, Lieutenant Governor, Sheila Oliver, has really acknowledged that that's what we're doing in Atlantic City and given us a tremendous amount of support for it. The state needs to be involved in this. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can't do it alone? No. Someone says, let the private sector do it alone. You say? I think the private sector leads. They have to lead. It's their industry. And then we need support from uh, the body politic. Absolutely. And that partnership makes for the success. Joe and Jack, we appreciate you joining us. Um, let's make sure we continue to monitor the progress, not Thank just you. of your casino, but truthfully of Atlantic City overall. Atlantic City. Because people often forget, yeah, it's Atlantic City down there. They have trouble. They're, maybe they're coming back, maybe not. It's everyone in the state who is affected by what's going on in AC. And we appreciate what you're doing. And Thank more you. importantly, we'll continue to progress. Thanks for giving us that opportunity. The progress. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thanks for having us. You got it. This is State of Affairs. Stay right there. This is State of Affairs. I'm Steve Adubato. We're at NJTV Studios in Newark, and we'll be right back right after this. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of State of Affairs with Steve Adubato has been provided by TD Bank, New Jersey Sharing Network, Community Food Bank of New Jersey, NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, Johnson & Johnson, and by Choose New Jersey. Promotional support provided by NJ Advance Media and by ROINJ.